is fine. Right, so, uh, you know, the first slide essentially uh, summarizes the purpose of why I'm here. That is, this is a cry for help. Um, cry for help from the tech community. So, you know, uh, I, I have, for like many of you, I have been a software engineer till about three years back. I, you know, my speciality was embedded system, wireless, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, along the line, it happened, I happened to get into some activism, uh, especially activism on social media. And uh, um, what I realized was that, you know, there was a deluge of misinformation on social media, whether it is WhatsApp, Twitter, um, you know, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And so in uh, February, 2017, um, um, sort of I took a break from work. I was freelancing since about 2010 to 2007, end of 2016. and decided to start alt news um, along with a few friends and essentially um, the aim of alt news was to uh, discover misinformation uh, on social media uh, research it debunk it and document it that is what uh, we did we have been doing for the past two and a half years so uh, you know there are a lot of gory examples of misinformation i'm not going to I have not put up those examples, but I'm going to take you through a couple of simple examples and to sort of uh, show what extent there is misinformation. So, for example, you know, when Mr. Vajpayee died, a former prime minister, uh, Z News and DNA, they published this picture claiming that uh, AIMS doctors are paying tribute to Mr. Vajpayee. Uh, when we looked up this picture, it was actually from China. And... Uh, Essentially, they had picked up a random picture, which was viral on WhatsApp and, you know, mainstream publications like uh, Z News and uh, DNA had published. And uh, this happens again and again. Uh, for example, when the Balakot strikes had happened, there are multiple TV channels like India Today, etc., etc., who were putting out a video, which was of a, you know, which was a about two and a half year old video uh, claiming that you know, this is Indian Air Force entering Pakistan airspace, etc. So uh, there is very little diligence, especially in journalistic circles, uh, when it comes to such issue. And the uh, the problem is that uh, you know I have you know in the past couple of years, I have uh, uh, taught in a few journalism schools, and there's literally no training as far as digital tools are concerned. You know, something like this, something like this. You know, all it needs is a Google search to debunk. So, you know, if you go to images.google.com, you know, that little camera icon in there, that is all you need to figure out whether, you know, where an image originates from. Uh, when it comes to a video, you very often, all you need to do is break up a video into individual slices and upload one of the frames through that and you figure out, you know, where the video originated from. It, I mean... Uh, it does sound straightforward when I say it like that. I mean, there very often we have to t go into much more inquiry, but that is all it requires. But still, there are many institutions where none of this is taught, right? So, which is why uh, uh, you know we came up with Alt News. Our work obviously goes much beyond just doing Google reverse image wow. search. That's not what I've been doing for the past two and a half years. Uh, but uh, but yeah, but this is where where you start. Uh, now, something like this needs more investigation. You know, you have a picture of Mr. Nehru and it is being claimed that, you know, uh, people are thrashing him for China war failure. Um, the, you know, if you do just a si simple Google reverse image search, I mean, if, if I ask people in this room to debunk this, and let's say if you have a, let's say whatever, 9 to 5 or 9 to 7 job and, you know, you get this on WhatsApp, I don't think many of you will have the time or inspiration to, you know, even if you may have the capability, because a lot of you are software engineers here, you probably may not have the time or inspiration to, you know, open the laptop after a long day, figure out, you know, what's true or what's not true on WhatsApp. Uh, this needed a little more investigation. What we found out, so if you're, if you, you know, if you've done a Google reverse image search, unfortunately how Google works, you know, the tweet that shows this, if you reverse image search, 
in Google results, you get the same thing, you know. So how do you figure out what is the, you know, what is the actual fact? So we did a lot of digging and eventually we came across this Indian Express copy, you know, uh, Google has these uh, newspapers archive, google.com slash newspaper. And uh, we went back to 1962 and we looked at various newspaper archives. And in January 1962, we found that Mr. Nehru was visiting a AICC session in Patna. And there was a huge deluge of people wanting to see him and there was almost a stampede. And that is when, you know, this picture that you see, Mr. Nehru was about to sort of jump into the crowd to stop the crowd and the security people stopped him. And this was in January 1962. This was before the 1962 war started. So it could not, you know, this picture could not have been representative of anything to do with the 1962 war. So something like this takes more time uh, to research. Uh, this, in, this story, in fact, took us a lot of time to, you know, go through all the newspaper archives and figure out, you know, what is the actual fact of the case. And uh, the problem is that, uh, you know, this issue of, uh, there's a huge amount, you know, a lot of here are from sort of privileged families, or at least at this point in time, we have certain privilege in life. But there's a huge section of population uh, which does not have that kind of privilege. Uh, you must have heard of the child kidnapping rumors that happened last year and over 30 people were, you know, lynched just because of the child kidnapping rumors. Uh, and the, this issue of lack of digital literacy, this has been uh, abused by political parties across the sphere. So, you know, we were think, we, earlier we were seeing something which was sort of a propaganda targeted at uh, Mr. Nehru. Now, this is the official Madhya Pradesh Congress account putting out a video, and this was a clipped video. Okay, this was just before the just before the election where it was claimed that, you know, uh, Rajnath Singh went to a rally, you know, uh, in leading up to the elections and said, Chaukidar Chor hai. Now, it is unimaginable that, you know, somebody who's a home minister went there and said that. But, but it sounded like that. And why was that? Because, you know, through the speech, what he was saying is that Chaukidar Chor nahi hai, Chaukidar Pyor hai. And he asked the crowd to repeat Chaukidar Pyor hai. So what the, some of the folks did was they clipped out his part, you know, his part of the speech, and they just played what the crowd was saying. And because you, you know, because you were sort of trained to hear Chaukidar Chor hai, when the crowd was saying Chaukidar Pyor hai, it sounded like Chaukidar Chor hai. And, you know, this, this video went viral. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we have a certain fault line in our democracy, uh, which is being abused by political parties of all kinds, you know, and they are abusing it to set a certain narrative and it impacts different sections of the population in different way. There are people who, you know, there are people who literally treat your WhatsApp inbox like a newspaper. You know, they, they cannot even imagine the fact that something that, that has come on WhatsApp could be untrue. There is a section of population like that. There is a section of population who have mobile phones, but they don't know that Chrome is some is an application called a browser. They don't know how to go to Google and how to tap in a few keywords to figure out what is the uh, fact of the case. So, so you know, considering all these issues, uh, we, as I said, you know, Alt News started off as a journalistic intervention. That is. Uh, we started looking at what is viral. We have a few tools. For example, Facebook has a tool called CrowdTangle. Uh, we use TweetDeck. You know, we use various Twitter filters. We try and figure out what is what is being circulated, what is viral on social media. Very often, things that are viral on social media they are provocative in nature and tend to have a component of misinformation. So that is how we track. You know, what could be misinformation in the social media ecosystem. Once we track it, we sort of write about it and then push it on our social media accounts. The other thing that we did, uh, and by the way, so whatever we have done, uh, it's not that we have been very successful, but we have had a bit of an impact. So, you know, there have been people who, who will say that, look, Alt News has published this, it must be true, I'm gonna delete my tweet, or I'm gonna take down whatever, you know, whatever I must have posted on social media. 
But besides the journalistic intervention, what we also uh, learned, as I said, you know, that they're not, um, you know, the journalists are not really being taught what, you know, how to track misinformation. So we uh, teamed up with Google um, and uh, last year we trained about 100 and around 120 journalists. I mean, there are multiple things uh, of which Alt News, you know, Alt News was involved in training 120 journalists. You know, these journalists went through a five day, you know, all day training. I think it's missing. Yeah, so it's too loud. Yeah, so the journalists went through a five-day training where we took them through all kinds of uh, things, you know, how to figure out uh, lat long, you know, how to figure out, you know, let's say if there's a bomb blast somewhere and uh, let's say somewhere in a conflict area. Now, a lot of people start tweeting from that area and how do you figure out that this bomb blast actually happened and it did not happen, you know, some two years ago, you know, this is not a two-year-old video. So then you look at uh, the lat long of people who are tweeting from there, you know, Twitter has has the geo coordinates. Sometimes some of them who t turn it on, you, you can see the geo coordinates and you see whether people from that area are tweeting about something similar or not. So we took them through a range of skills and taught them. Uh, in the meantime, we also wrote a book where we documented all, you know, the major kind of misinformation that is viral on social media. So, but see, as a fact checker, we, we did make some impact in the sense that, you know, for example, Times of India now has a fact checking unit. India today now has a fact checking unit. Danik Jagran now has a fact checking unit. So we did make some impact, uh, fact checking become a beat, uh, you know. But uh, as a fact checker, if you, you know, the way I am looking for an, for impact is let's say, you know, you have two subsets, you know, one is one subset is the people who are being exposed to misinformation and the other subset is people who are reading fact checks. If you look at the intersection between this, if you look at a Venn diagram, then there's very little intersection. Most of the people who are being exposed to misinformation are not reading fact checks. And as a fact checker, that is the issue that uh, we wish to solve. That is, you know, this area of intersection slowly, slowly increases. And that is where we realize that just this journalistic intervention is not enough. We are writing in English, we are writing in Hindi, but uh, most of the times we are just reaching the elite section of the crowd. Uh, how many of you here have heard of Alt News? Just a show of hands. Well, that's, that's nice. <laughs> so, uh, so, but you know, we are not really reaching the people who we should reach, you know, and that is when we thought that, you know, we need to take this a step further and there has to be a technological, um, you know, a technological intervention where we make it extremely easy for people to fact check. You don't have to go to Google reverse image search. You don't have to splice down uh, videos. You know, we want to make the workflow as easy as tapping on, you know, you get something on WhatsApp, you tap on the video or image, you share it with an app and it will tell you if it has already been fact checked, it will tell you these are the facts of the case. That is how easy we want to make fact checking so that people at large, number one, it is a easy, you know, it's, it's an easy tool to give to people saying that, look, this is how easy it is to fact check, you know, before you forward something on WhatsApp, just pass it through this app. You know, that is all we are requesting you to do is a extra thing. And uh, especially in rural areas, you know, uh, it becomes much more easier to sort of give this app instead of telling them, you know, most of the places they don't even have laptops. So you, till now, for example, if you want to use Google reverse image search on a phone, you have to go to images.google.com, click on the three dots, say request desktop site, then, you know, sort of increase, you know, zoom it, then click on the camera icon. That is how difficult at this point of time it is if you want to look up an image, a reverse image search on mobile. So what, you know, even though there has been so much misinformation and we'll come to that, how, you know, the technological companies, the, you know, the big guys like Facebook, Twitter, etc., they have actually failed us. They have not, they have given us the tools to circulate misinformation, but they have not given us a single tool to authenticate misinformation. So we created something. So, you know, so for example, uh, had a journalist had this image, uh, and I'll show you a quick demo. Had the journalists had this image and this tool, you know, 
pushing it to this tool, they would have gotten the fact check article which says fake image of AMS doctors paying last respect to. So we want to help the community by giving a tool where you, all you want to do, all you have to do is put an image and we will map it to the corresponding fact check. Uh, we are not, this is, there's no deep learning in this. All we are doing is, you know, looking at P hash of an image, the perceptual hash of an image and comparing it to something that we have stored in our database. Uh, other times, you know, when you, when you're forwarding things on uh, WhatsApp, what happens is that the MD5 sum remains the same. You know, something very, very simple. If you forward a video for the whole duration of the time, you know, if you keep forwarding, keep forwarding, the MD5 sum is not going to change. So if you want to fact check something, if you map the fact check to the MD5 sum, then whenever you get something on WhatsApp, you feed it to this app, you're not even uploading the image or video to the server. All we are looking at is the certain parameters and trying to compare it to what we have stored in the server and giving an instant fact check. So uh, this is not, we have not announced this publicly yet, but uh, the Android version of the Alt News app is out. Let me uh, give you guys a quick demo of what we have done. So, okay. right, so, uh, you know, what I have here is a bunch of videos, sorry, what I have here is a bunch of videos uh, which are viral, which are often viral on social media. So, for example, if you look at this video, uh, this is a video of a, you know, car going along a highway and there's a boulder which comes and crashes the car. Now, about two weeks ago, this video was viral claiming that this is uh, Amboli Ghat in Maharashtra, okay? Now, if I want to see what the actual fact of the case is, all I do is share, you know, you're on WhatsApp, you use the share, the Alt News app opens up, you just click on the Alt News app, you'll upload the app and immediately it'll tell you that the video is from Tibet and the video is not from Maharashtra, right? That is how quickly we are giving you a, uh, the feedback saying that where the video is from. Uh, let's take another image. Uh, there are some very gory images. Uh, so for example, here is Mr. Oasi claiming in a speech, I won't play the speech, but he claimed that on India Gate, uh, a, you know, a large, there's 65% of the names are Muslim names and they are all freedom fighters. Uh, you know, this is while he, you know, he said this in a speech and this video became viral. So I look, look it up. Right. So it will give you the corresponding fact check saying that, you know, this is a false claim. And if you open the article, it will explain why exactly this is a false claim. Uh, similarly, let me sort of show, show you guys a quick image check. So for example, this image, uh, it is a newspaper clipping, which says that Pranam Mukherjee has said uh, this is this is a statement which has been ascribed to Pranam Mukherjee and again you know I share it open it with the alt news app and it'll, it'll give give me the corresponding fact check so Oops. Right. So this is what we have done that, and it is a very, very simple solution. We have not done anything that is even comparable to rocket science. Uh, and for, so the obvious question is that, you know, let's say if something is not fact checked, 
what happens. So then you get this tile which says click next to get this fact checked. Uh, in on the top, you sort of press the next button, you submit it, it goes, goes into a dashboard at the back end where, uh, where you know, the fact checker. So uh, we have a small team all to use now. So a bunch of fact checkers will look at the information that you have uh, submitted. And once it is fact checked, you'll get a notification. If we don't want to fact check it, for example, it's a Bollywood meme or we're just unable to fact check it. There's nothing much to fact check. Then we'll say that, okay, we reject your notification. This is the case. So this is a simple solution that we have implemented. Uh, what is the aim? The aim is that let's say you are in your college or your school WhatsApp group, somebody pushes a image. Now let's, you know, till now what we were doing is we were just publishing it on our social media accounts. And even if some of you are following alt news, you know, the F Facebook or Twitter algorithm will decide, you know, what you see, what you don't see. So I don't even know whether you will see the corresponding alt news story or not. Even if we have fact checked it, we have pushed it out. Unless we put in a lot of money to boost the traffic on Facebook, we don't know how many people will actually see the fact check algorithm. Uh, here, uh, sorry, the, the fact check article. Here, what we are attempting to do is that if you are in WhatsApp, you open an image, you push, push it to alt news, you get an instant article. The hope is that if you get an instant article, then there's a much more likelihood of you pushing it back into that WhatsApp group. You know, I was talking about sort of this area of intersection increasing. Till now, you know, all these WhatsApp groups have been closed networks. There was no way to get back into those WhatsApp groups. But if I had, you know, if out of 256 people on that, out of 256 people who are on that WhatsApp group, even if two, three people have the app and if they can fact check it instantly, there's a higher probability of them pushing that fact check back into the group and back into the ecosystem where misinformation originated. So that is how we are trying to achieve this aim that is uh, increasing the intersection of people exposed to fact check, uh, people exposed to misinformation and the same number of people reading fact checks. Uh, the app that we have created, uh, we're going to put it out in open source. We've not put it out yet, uh, but we'll put it out in a permissive license. All the content that, crea that Alt News creates, we, you know, it's Creative Commons content. There are multiple publications who republish our content from Scroll to Quint to Wire to etc. And uh, we don't charge a pie for it. The whole point was to sort of uh, uh, keep this free because we, you know, we want maximum people to have access to it. Now, now the way this, uh, what we have designed is, you know, what you saw on the mobile is just a dumb interface to a underlying API layer. The API layer is the actual intelligent interface, which answers the question, what is the fact check to this core? What is the fact check corresponding to this image, video, text, or links? For now, we have implemented image slash video. We have not implemented text and links. But this is the layer which answers that question. So now what we can do is let's say we, we are on Twitter and we can use a Twitter, you can use, use a Twitter API to create a Twitter bot. You link it to this. If anybody puts out that image or video and if you go and tag Alt News or Alt News Hindi, we will uh, shoot out an article, uh, you know, if it's Alt News, we'll give you an English Alt News article corresponding to the, you know, corresponding to the image. If, if it's Hindi, we'll give you a Hindi Alt News article. Similarly, you know, we can, uh, none of this has been implemented for now. We, you know, we just, for example, we just uh, pushed out the app for a uh, week ago or so. But these are the possibilities. That is, you know, on Facebook, we can create a Facebook Messenger bot. Similarly, WhatsApp, we've been trying to speak to WhatsApp. They, we've been requesting them that give us the API. You know, if, if we get the WhatsApp API access, then all you have to do is forward the image to a designated number and the same thing happens. That is, you get an instant fact check. Uh, unfortunately, you know, WhatsApp, even though they have given API to a number of people, for now they are, you know, haven't been very cooperative with us. So this is what we are aiming. That is, you have a centralized database of fact checks versus images and, uh, you know, uh, there's not like a whole lot of misinformation out there. There is misinformation, but it is it is not something that a community cannot fact check. Now, for example, now there are so many people fact checking. You know, there's Times of India, India Today, there's Alt News, there's SM Hoaxley, there's Boom Live. Even Danik Jagran is doing it. I think India at this point of time has the highest number of IFC and certified fact checkers. There is an international organization called Pointer. Um, 
which has a certification called IFCN certification. And it essentially says that, you know, these are the nonpartisan fact checkers. And there are about 11 of them in India as opposed to nine of them in the US. So there's a lot of fact checking happening. And once we create this, uh, you know, this database with an API layer, then it is, it is very much possible to, you know, to sort of reach out to even rural areas, ask them to install this app and say, you know, before you forward something, just make sure that you pass it through this app. Uh, but what are the challenges? I'm running out of time. Uh, but what are the challenges? The challenges is, is that, you know, we are a very small team. Uh, we have just 11 people. Uh, we are completely not-for-profit. Uh, we run through grants and donations. And we have kept it that way because uh, media in uh, today is highly influenced by corporates. You know, uh, we, we have big corporates who have bought off who have not bought off, but basically invested in a lot of media organizations and they control the narrative as to, you know, what media publishes. So which is why we decided to stay not for profit and depend only on donations and grants. Uh, the, the, you know, the Facebook, Twitter and Google's of the world, they are not doing much about the issue. So for example, uh, what Google has done is that they have uh, introduced a structured data called fact check. So if you, enter that, you know, if you have that structured data in your article, then this is what your search results look like. So for example, you know, a normal Google search result won't look like this, but because Alt News has its structured data, the claim review tag included, uh, we, you know, you have this claim, you have this, you know, who, who claimed it and what was the fact check, you know, whether it was true, false, partly true, partly false. So, uh, and Google also does a good job at uh, pushing up the ranks. So, for example, you know, when we wrote this Dhoni run out article, you know, this recent World Cup thing where it was claimed that, you know, he was probably run out unfairly and we, you know, we, sh we wrote an article how that was not the case. So, you know, the article was number one on the Google search result. And that happens with a lot of articles for a transient period of time. When something is being searched very rapidly, the alt news articles is usually at the number one or number two position. So, that is what Google is doing. What Facebook has done is that it has partnered with various fact-checking uh, websites. Uh, and uh, in India, for example, they're partnered with about five fact-checking websites. They have a manual interface where you put in a Facebook link, you say that this is the corresponding fact-check and Facebook will mark it. Uh, it is a complete manual process. And which is why a lot of international fact-checkers don't want to work with Facebook anymore. Uh, they essentially say that, you know, it is, I mean, for example, when something goes viral on social media, it gets shared thousands of times, not just from one account, but multiple accounts, share it thousands of times. You'll see the same content again and again. Now it is impossible for somebody to manually put in all the links into the Facebook interface and say, look, these are all the cases of fact checks. So multiple fact checkers have stopped working with Facebook purely because of this problem. And their main complaint is that they don't have an API. You know, a company this big does not provide an API. It gives you a manual interface to actually key in data. Uh, Twitter is not doing anything at all. Twitter does not even acknowledge misinformation. What WhatsApp did was that it limited how many messages you can forward. You know, uh, only five, you know, you can forward only five messages and all those kind of limits. But nothing helped. Uh, you know, India right now is is definitely we have a fake news crisis and it is not just India. Uh, just two days ago uh, in Bangladesh, you know, the child kidnapping rumors that happened in India, you now they have carried over to Bangladesh and eight people were lynched in Bangladesh. Just yesterday, we wrote an article on Alt News how, about how a different uh, video, there was one video which was being used in 2018. Now there's a different video which is being used in 2019, again to start these child kidnapping rumors. So uh, essentially, you know, whatever these big companies have done, this has not stopped. People are still getting killed. I mean, uh, this, I don't, how many of you know this image? So this is from 2017 from Jharkhand, where this man was passing through a village and uh, it was, uh, you know, it was claimed that he is a child kidnapper and people got together and killed him. Now the problem is not just that he's dead, but people around him are in jail. So uh, one person is dead, people around in jail and for, for whose fault is it? I mean, the problem is that it is not the fault of the people there because they are not, they are, we have not enabled them to recognize misinformation. 
we have not you know you, you know if if somebody crosses a road if a child crosses a road and if you don't teach the child how to cross a road you can't blame the child if something goes wrong it's exactly like that and which is why you know which is why this cry for help that while we have done something like this this is very rudimentary you know there's a lot more that can be done in in terms of technological intervention in terms of increasing this area of intersection we want a more and more critical mass of people reading fact checks you know uh, fact checks in different languages etc cetera, etc cetera. there's so much more possible for example we have this database we can have equivalent to a virus scanner you know you look at your uh, gallery and you do, you don't even have to upload your images and videos you just look at this parameters md5 sounds p hash and it becomes an equivalent of a virus scanner you have a misinformation scanner anytime you get a mis any misinformation in your gallery there'll be a pop up saying that look you have you know you've been exposed to misinformation just the way you've been exposed to malware you can gamify it you know you can teach you know kids can be taught how to how to uh, look at misinformation uh, at high school level before their prejudices are set in uh, and uh, essentially and that you know political misinformation does not appeal to them so you, know, you can gamify it to sort of teach them how to look at misinformation uh, you, you know of course and they are you know right now what we are using is a very you know we have a standard data set and we are comparing against it there's so much more that can be done using deep learning using machine learning etc cetera, etc cetera. and um, that is what you know sort of uh, i am here for that you know you guys are the ones who have the skills and you have the privilege and you know uh, we are drowning in fake news and this is an appeal that you know you guys need to come forward and sort of we need to build something which is at a community level the the big honchos are not really doing anything to tackle this issue so yeah that's it thank you oh that's my email address pratik um We'll take a few questions. Just yeah. one quick question from my side. Yeah. Can you talk about the legal stuff that we can do around it? Because companies are very aggressive when you have a copyright violation and they kind of are ready to kind of remove copyright violated stuff very quickly because of the laws around it. Exactly. And do we have anything similar around that on misinformation, libel there is laws? None. There is none. And there is a tricky area. So you cannot start. So for example, these child kidnapping rumors, you know, uh, the only thing that is possible in law is criminalization of misinformation, right? But that is very tricky. So for example, you have somebody, again, you know, sitting in a village and, uh, you know, you get a rumor saying that your child is going to be kidnapped, you know, organs are going to be trafficked. That person is very afraid and they are forwarding it to the relatives because from a position of fear not from a position of wanting somebody lynched so how do you criminalize such you know when you when you create a law it is same for all kinds of misinformation whether it is political misinformation whether it is you know this kind of misinformation whether it's medical misinformation for example when nipah virus happened in kerala uh, there was a message which went viral claiming that if you have a homeopathic drug called gelsemium 200 it will protect you from nipah virus and this is something which had a 85% mortality rate and somebody who would believe in that rumor is certainly going to die you know so but Again, if somebody forwards that, you can't sort of say that, okay, I'm going to charge you because just because you forward a, forward a, rumor, a rumor about Nipah virus, you can't do that. Okay, more questions from the, or questions from the auditorium? No. One on the top, yeah. Hi, Pratik. Uh, wonderful initiative, just loved it. Thank you. So I have uh, two questions. So first one is uh, at this point, pace at which these viral contents are generated, how do you keep pace it with it? Because daily thousands, maybe more uh, of fake news are created and it takes time to do the fact checks. So first thing is, how do you keep pace? Second thing is, since you are a non-profit organization and I believe that you intend to remain so, will you be ready to open an API access to your stuff? that where you do the fact check and, and, and store it so that external applications can connect to your application. Yes, uh, so let me answer the second question. Okay, first question, how do we keep pace? So we don't really uh, keep pace in the sense that there is a lot of things that we don't, we are not able to fact check. But the point is not to fact check everything. The point is that let's say if you, if you get 10 forwards on, let's say 50 forwards on WhatsApp and even if I can fact check 10 of them and say that, look, this is the fact of the case, 
immediately you are creating a doubt in the person's mind saying that okay the 11th one may be false let me check it so the point is not to fact check everything the point is to fact check a critical number of pieces so that you create a doubt in in a person's mind that is number one uh, number two uh, oh by the way you forgot to say so this whole app is created by a company called qed42 in Pune, and they have done it pro bono so you know they have not charged us anything uh, while i have coded all my life but I have not written a single code for this particular app. Uh, but uh, so yes, we are we we will open it up. Uh, we we are open to opening up API access and things like that. Of course, we have to figure out you know if those guys are paying the server fees, etc. So we have to figure out the mechanisms. But the whole point is that keeping everything open. You know, our content is open. The code is going to be open source, and we will also open up the API. Yes. Okay, we have a question there at the back. Okay, hi. Uh, hi, Pratik. Uh, so, let's say, hypothetically, even when, let's say, the technicalities of doing fact check is figured out, how do you actually motivate people to do the fact check? So, for example, when you read a piece of information before, like, you don't know that it's going to cause you a damage. And if I don't know that this is going to cause any damage, what would, let's say, motivate me to, like, actually go and even though if I have a technology, what would motivate me to, like, actually go and spend that minute in like fact checking that particular article because you don't know about the damage before it's already done right see the answer to that is in how let's say why do why do parents go and vaccinate their children you know even the poorest of poorest households go and vaccinate their children right why because government took up an initiative and told everybody that vaccination is necessary. That was an educational initiative. Similarly for everything. So, uh, you know, there are multiple parts to it. So, as I said, we also started an educational intervention, but that was very limited. But the point is for that educational intervention to also fan out, you know, these things have to be taught in schools. In UK, it's already taught in schools. You know, high school students are being taught that there, there is a case of misinformation. Kerala in certain district, they've started teaching people that, you know, there is misinformation. So uh, you have to teach people, you know, that there is misinformation. This also That also has to go parallelly. Just the way you taught people how kids need to be vaccinated. And then you give them a tool. Okay, so they are like, okay, I know there is misinformation. What do I do about it? Like here, take this tool and fact check it. So it, it cannot be just a unidirectional approach. It has to be a multidirectional approach. Okay, we have, uh, we can probably take one more question. Um, yeah. Hey, are there any concrete ideas you have in terms of how this group could get connected with what you need to do? Any specific next steps that you might have in mind? So, um, so as you see at this point of time, you know, it is very, very basic. We're just looking at MD5 sounds, we're looking at P hash and uh, it is, you know, we, we have a fixed set and we're just looking, you know, we just compare it against that. So obviously there's a lot more that can be done. There are fact checks being done by, you know, by multiple organizations, you know, sort of get together. There's a lot of things that can be done. Um, I don't have a whole lot of ideas at this point of time, but which is why, you know, there's a larger group of people who can brainstorm and figure out, you know, uh, you know, when you start looking, when you start thinking of this issue and you, know, you start applying your, for example, in the West, what they're doing is they're using NLP for everything, but that does not work in India. In India, most of the misinformation is in form of images and videos. You know, in the West, you, you know, in, in the US, they are protected by the first amendment. They have these long, long, they're writing these long articles, which are complete fiction. But they can do that because they are not going to get arrested for it. Here, a couple of guys got arrested after Alt News wrote articles. Not that we support the arrest, but they did get arrested. And then all, all of those who were writing these long form fake news, it all stopped because of the... But so now they're concentrating on these videos, images, sometimes WhatsApp forwards. And uh, yeah, so NLP does. So we have to figure out, you know, what works. Every, every country has its unique misinformation scenario. For example, if you go to uh, Southeast Asia, there's a lot of medical misinformation, you know. You eat this, you'll become more virile and all that kind of misinformation. So it, it depends, you know, where you are and, you know, what sort of solution you look for. Okay, a huge round of applause for Pratik. I know there are many. I know there are many more questions on the talk that Pratik did and the talk that Sandeep did before on, you know, networks. They both will be in Audi 3 at 12.25 on about controlling narratives. 
and it says controlling narratives on Twitter, but I'm guessing it's going to be broader than that. So if you are interested and some of you are asking more questions or you want to talk about how you can contribute, go and attend the Birds of Feather session, which is more interactive.